Hey everybody, um, it's Ryan Featherstone. I'm a local realtor in the St. Thomas, London, and Port Stanley real estate market. Uh, I'm here with an old friend of mine, Nathaniel Freeman. He's with Real Approved Lending, and we're here for our second dose of our what we're trying to hope for is a monthly podcast. And just to let all you guys know what's going on in the market, um, the world influences that are going to affect the market, pressure interest rates, and uh, you know things that you should know about when you're looking at buying or financing a home. Absolutely. So, I'm a... I'm in vacation mode. I got my orange juice and my coffee, so <laughs> and I got my little cup of water. So, perfect. So, so Nathaniel, how was? Uh, tell me first of all, you, you just had dental surgery. <laughs> I so did. What, what what happened? What 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 went on? Because I knew you had a problem in your mouth before, and it wasn't just the way you talk. What yeah. what is it? <laughs> all right. So I had a cut along uh, one of my teeth, which left some exposed part of tooth. So what they did is a gum graft. So they cut out a portion of the top of my mouth and pulled that, put that over the gum that was exposed, oh, over the tooth that was exposed, and then just kind of stitched it in. <laughs> so, it's, so it's basically a skin graft. It's a skin graft just in your mouth. In your mouth. Yeah. Uh, high possibility for infection, maybe. <laughs> high possibility for infection. You can't eat anything. with Like, I can't Mashed bite potato down. diet? I'm going with the vanilla ice cream diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not bad. So you're probably missing pizza right now. I am. <laughs> it's the greatest love loss of my entire life. So what what's going on with the business then? How are you running the business now that you have no mouth? Because obviously a sales job. Well, you know you need yeah. you need your mouth. <laughs> it was it's been tough. I, honestly, I've just taken a break for two weeks because during the first week, if I talked too much, my mouth just started bleeding. The second week, it was just. I would stop feeling it get irritated. <laughs> so it's like, all right, so I'm taking a month off while this thing heals, but I'm still working with all of my current clients, obviously. It's just... You're just like a bloodier version of your... Yeah. Of like I, oh, it was insane. I'd be on the phone just talking about uh, interest rates, and then uh, I would just start to feel like a little... Trickle. Blood. Yeah, just a little blood, and I'm like, oh, okay. I'll finish this conversation quickly. Yeah. So, we, I mean, we, speaking of interest rates, we just had a huge yeah. announcement yesterday. So... You're the, you're the mortgage guy. Tell, tell everybody what's going <laughs> All on. All right. So what happened is uh, the Bank of Canada finally decided to raise interest rates. So interest, oh, the variable rate, I should say. So the variable interest rate increased by 0 0.25, which is, um, is going to be reflective in the total market. The real simple way to put it is anybody who has a variable rate mortgage rate now, their interest rate is going up by 0 0.25. Okay. So anyway. So the bank's, Bank of Canada's prime interest rate took an increase yeah right? it was a half point it was a 0 0.25 okay quarter point yeah okay i thought it was a half point what well a lot of people are seeing that and uh what it was is we were at 0 0.25 and now it's up to 0.5 mm. so that's the mistake okay. a lot of people are making but um it's uh anybody who has variable rate mortgage we knew this was going to be happening the bank of canada announced earlier in the year that we were going to be seeing increases throughout the year so this was expected I am having some clients call me where they're like, hey, variable interest rates are going up. Should I lock in my rate rate now? Because that is an option that everyone has when you have a variable rate mortgage. You can switch into a fixed rate right. mortgage. My understanding was typically if variable rate went up, so would the fixed rate. So that, you know, yeah, d d don't they just kind of one follow the other? Doesn't it kind of cascade? They don't. They don't directly follow another. Like for the past few months, fixed interest rates have been going up while the variable rate stayed steady. Okay. Now that variable rate is going up, we do see that fixed rate's probably gonna go up as well, but they're based off of two separate systems. Cause these guys can lock in, right? If they're, if they're variable, yeah. they can lock in if they, if they wanna kind of like mitigate that risk. Because yeah. I mean, I think it's been in the news everywhere. Um, they keep saying we could be getting up to a one full point interest yep. rate increase right this over this 2022 right yeah i couldn't believe it because uh, well you knew it was happening and then uh i think you know they they didn't was it the last review they didn't increase when everybody yeah. expected that they were going to and then we get into this war that's you know in europe right now yeah and i personally thought well you know the fact that you know citizens especially you know we're seeing the you know, effects in terms of um, economic effects, yeah. gas pump, uh, you know, everything's going up, right? Up. Yeah. So I thought they would maybe, uh, I thought the opposite. I thought maybe that would kind of insulate us from a rate increase for a little bit, but here we are. Uh, yeah, here we are. And uh, 
You know, when it comes to situations like that, when it's more of an economic warfare, um, nobody really knows which direction the bank is going to take it. But since interest rates were predicted to rise, they rose them anyways. Uh, they did suggest that the Ukrainian conflict is part of the reason why they raised interest rates. But um, yeah, those, we got to control what we can do on this level. So, so. Your, um, your people, your people in your pipeline, the clients who haven't yet bought a home, but you've already got pre-approvals for these people, yeah. they're protected, aren't they, from this hike? Or, or like, don't they have a certain amount of days? Like, isn't it like, a, like a 60 or 90 days where their interest rate that's quoted from a lender is, is guaranteed is, is to them? Is the game? Uh, yes. But the way we work out variable interest rates is that they don't actually get let's say a variable interest rate of 1.89, what they're getting is a discount on the prime rate. Right, okay. So the so discount prime, remains the same, got but it. since prime went up, their rate does go up as well. Now, now those, that also being said, with fixed rates going up, everybody in Canada, when you're getting a pre-approval, you have to get pre-approved at the qualifying rate. So even if rates do go up, mm. we'll still qualify at that same rate, which means you'll still qualify for your uh, pre-approval. Okay. Are we going to see, do you think, um, because like you say, they're, they're not exactly related, but there is some correlation between the fixed and, and, and the variable rate. Do you think this is going to, and this is my prediction, I think for a short amount of time in the next coming months, there is going to be an influx of home buyers. Like I feel like there's going to be like a pressure situation where people feel like in order to avoid getting that, you know, the full one point rate increase yeah. that they're going to jump and just say you know what let's let's do it now because the the affordability we might be on the brink right now the affordability might be in limbo if we we waited a longer period of time yeah no uh absolutely i can't speak to the future because uh they took away my giant orb which i used to predict the future when i became a mortgage agent but um historically when we see interest rates go high we see bios go away because nobody wants to sell their house and buy a new house if their mortgage is going to be twice as much. Now, since people can see that rates are going to be up and everybody knows that rates are going up, mm. you might see a short-term game in a lot of buyers. But I think long-term... I think I think the face of the buyer might change. Like, yeah. I think right now with like, you know, just basically the lowest interest rates we've ever seen in history, it really yeah. opened it up for the investor economy absolutely and and of course investors always carry as much mortgage as they can because it just makes sense yeah. to, to do it that way um so i think where you'll see the pressure is the first time home buyer or the person trying to climb the property ladder and saying you know this is our opportunity yeah and we might not have it again so i just i just feel like there might be a little bit of pressure just uh, in the next few months but uh you know interestingly i just had a sales meeting on tuesday and it was with my broker of record and he was saying for the first time in many 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 months we're just starting to see small hairline fractures statistically in what we're seeing that, that maybe the housing market you know not, not not that you know some people are predicting this huge collapse but yeah. but maybe some things you know down the road when it becomes kind of a little bit more obvious statistically yeah. are looking to slow down and and i'm not saying a price adjustment because yeah. I, I don't see that but but maybe you know six to eight months from now we might see you know maybe a swing in the way the market is maybe not such a strong seller's market as we've been kind no, of been absolutely. into yeah well um i think it's unreasonable to predict what 20 40 percent year over year returns in real estate i think we should work on our best to get back to a nice healthy five percent yeah but over the past two years we've seen growth of well you can attest to this more than i can but like 20 percent, 40 percent in some markets even more in, yeah. in depending on what it is like i mean semi-detached homes were like i think the fastest growing segment at a 50 percent year over year so yeah. i mean if you if you own a semi-detached <laughs> home you're smiling right now yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it's for, I, I, I believe the pressures from the investor buyer putting the pressure on that segment because low maintenance, a lot of them are freehold. 
so they don't pay condo fees. It keeps their overhead low. Yeah. You know, they're not having to clean up a huge yard. And it's just like the rents are really good because there's a lot of square footage a lot of times. Good, well laid out, you know, semi-detached. Yeah. So, and I, and I see that even in, uh, you know, everywhere. I was just at a, a listing appointment today for one. Beautiful home. And they were just blown away when I told them, like, hey, this is where your neighbors have sold. And if we're going to yeah. project, you know, growth at, at its current rate, this is where what we could get today. And they're just like... You know, I almost knocked them out of their boots, which <laughs> yeah. which is a good feeling. And and when I do it, I like to you know under promise and over deliver. So I'm still hoping that there's more top end for them. Oh, absolutely. But they were, you know, it's it's kind of nice to see that and just kind of you know floor people. But at the yeah. same time, on the opposite end, you get all those people who are outside of ownership who are looking in, and it's almost like animosity at this system like they, yeah. they think it's greed they think it's capitalism they think it's real estate agents too like we get the yeah. blame you guys i had a guy he uh he posted on one of my so i've got this really great listing 163 william street in port stanley yeah and uh i had a coming soon sign on it like a lot of us do yeah we're allowed to for five days uh before it goes on mls mm -hmm. and this guy goes you real estate agents you know you're playing these games um, you know, trying to get people to bid up. Well, it's not a game. It's it's just advertising that is coming for sale. Yeah. Um, but, but you can't. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I can't oh, make absolutely. people bid on a house. Oh, absolutely. For one, and you know, I I've, I get way too much credit for driving the price of homes up because all I'm doing is marketing and representing a client. Yeah. And I got this guy who's thinking that it's uh, some sort of rigged game. Well. Well, if it is, I don't. I didn't design the pieces. Well, and also or the game board. Also, it's your responsibility to get your client the most amount of money you can for that property. Mm -hmm. so. And that's what I said to him. So, not to be a smart ass or anything, but I just wanted to point it out. Like, hey man, they don't they don't put a coming soon sign on gas pumps. They don't put coming soon signs on your loaves of bread or your milk in the grocery store. Yeah. Everything's going up, and it doesn't have to do with a coming soon sign. Oh, absolutely. You know. Yeah. They they print money, this is what happens. Yep. They print money. It's a uh, well, it's a very complicated economic system and I feel like a lot of people don't take the time to understand all the working pieces of economics. But at the bottom line, it comes down to individuals willing to pay more for properties. And that increases the market value of those properties. Now, it it's part of Part of the problem with the increased rise of house prices was us printing money. And it was also people being able to work remotely. Right. Um, like those tons of people in Toronto who they don't have to go into the office anymore. So now they can move further away from Toronto and buy a bigger house. Right. So brings me to another little topic. So we just kind of when we were setting up here, my girlfriend Leanne, she mentioned, you know, when she lived in Vancouver, um, you know, it was expensive to drive and own a, own a car and parking was scarce. So people would, you know, buy cars together, co co own cars because for all practical purposes, people needed to get places, but they didn't have the affordability or the parking spaces available to actually make it, you know, something that would actually work for the city. Yeah. And you start seeing that in the housing market where, you know, at first it's families, like families and extended family buying places that are like multi-generational homes. And I see more and more homes with more than one kitchen or like laid out so that they can get the, the whole family under one roof. Because obviously now you're all splitting the same bills, yeah. one property tax bill, one Rogers bill, yeah. one, you know, it, it just makes it a lot more affordable. They're, they're designed so people can still have some independence yeah. and and still maintain closeness to their their families but beyond that i mean look at look at look at shows like friends where you've got a very expensive manhattan real estate market and you've got yeah. people who are young professionals who are banding together and you know living together and sharing expenses together and i, I think this is going to be something that that more or less trends here um just more tenants in common yeah and uh in some way or another like you have to get into the housing market if you want to climb the ladder here oh, so, absolutely. so it's the first step right so yeah. you know we talked the last time about your first house and how it wasn't the ideal house it wasn't yeah. like it was a fixer-upper you know absolutely. to a t yeah um but you know if you had say you had a very good friend of yours who made a good income who you could trust and you could have bought a property together you might have been more inclined to oh, go absolutely. to your maximum spending power yeah 
in an appreciating market and just try to get that more of a bounce off the market. Oh, absolutely. Well, anyone who's uh, good with basic mathematics can tell you that if you buy a house for 200000 it goes up by 50%, you've made 100000 But if you buy a house for 400000 and then it goes up 50%, now you're up 200000 so you've doubled the amount of return you get, even though you paid more for the initial investment. Right. So given that, I wouldn't be surprised to see people starting to band together, especially with the how... I won't say unaffordable house prices all, but how high house prices are getting in Ontario. You ever had that talk, like, or, or had like a client like that, where where maybe you could suggest make that suggestion, like, hey, listen, you're close to qualifying. Like, do you have somebody? Like, usually, I know you guys usually go to. Do you have a co-signer? Yeah. But you know, this might be like the not the solution in all cases, but an option that people maybe never even considered. Yeah. Well. It's something that I've talked to a very few clients about, but that's mainly because one, I have to maintain their confidentiality, which means I can't go talk to their friends about what's going on with their situation. Also, I have to look at it from an affordability standpoint. If I'm advising my client to maybe, hey, get this co signal they still have to be responsible for all the payments. So unless that person's moving in with them, right. that's really the problem where I'm looking at it because even though you might be buying the house with your parents, you might not want to live with your parents. True. So if you're responsible for all the payments on your own, and I know that going in, I want to make sure that that place is affordable for you because I don't want any one of my clients to go house broke. Right. Well, so the people who uh, I'm selling their place on William Street right now, Yeah. Um, it was two couples. They're they're all best friends, the, the yeah. four of them. And, uh, and they bought the place with like the highest of hopes and everything like that. So I was curious when they went to go, you know, list it with me. I'm like, yeah. so how's the friendship? How, how are things, right? And, you know, candidly, one of the owners says, you know, they're still our best friends. Of course, you know, you have disagreements, yeah. but you work, you work through those. And, you know, you communicate. And, you know, sometimes somebody's not happy about something, but you get through it, right? So it's yeah. just the way you manage relationships. Oh, absolutely. I've been through it myself. I, I bought a... Um, well, good friends of mine, Ying and Mike, I bought a cottage with those guys. Yeah. And for the most part, we rented it out in the summertime, but um, we, we each take a week ourselves and we'd always take turns and, and, and take care of that turnover. So when you had to clean it and get it ready for the next people. So, yeah. you know, we'd each take our turn and as long as everybody's carrying the load, the relationship's oh, good and they're, and they're still, you know, some of my best friends. So yeah. it can work. It can work. You just got to find the right people to do it with. Be selective. Yeah. Be Don't selective. just buy a house with anybody. <laughs> exactly. Because as many as those good stories we've had, we also hear tons of stories about people who are just roommates who can't live together anymore because it's just the relationships. How's your about. roommate? You got a roommate right I now. I recently got a roommate. My stepbrother <laughs> moved in with me. <laughs> how's, how's he doing anyway? He's pretty good. We're actually pretty agreeable with one another and we both work from home, but we all, both have our own space. My house okay. is big enough for the both of us. You had to run some Cat5 wire around the house as, a, as <laughs> yeah. an office space now. Yeah, and... Well, luckily, like I I love having internet throughout my house. So I already had wires was running upstairs. So okay. it's just like, okay, one and, run an extra one to his room and we're all good to go. What does he do? He... Now he's in IT and he works at TD. He's one of the upper manager, or not managers, or maybe he is a manager. I'm not entirely sure what he does. I know he writes codes and he manages the updates in the software. Yeah. But his position, I don't know. But he makes a great amount of money. Well, I'm, I'm guessing, yeah. yeah. I, I'm guessing you guys are more into IT than you are into OnlyFans at home making money. So. Oh, yeah. Although, <laughs> that being said, that being said, my brokerage has done, like, had... We have had clients that do OnlyFans full time, and we've still gotten the mortgages. Look, okay, I'm just curious. What's the income like? You probably can't tell me, can you? Well, they want my client, and it's something that was there right. before I was at this brokerage. So, oh, okay, it was around 160 thousand. I mean, wow, that's a good that, business. That's, that's a good income. Now, most <laughs> lenders don't want to lend to somebody with that sort of income, but we do have lenders that are willing to. That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So before, uh, when I was talking to you earlier, you mentioned that there's a new lending product that, that requires oh, yes. no down payment yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. So from, uh, well, I'm trying to figure out the best way to put it. We have products where you can buy houses with 0% down. 
it is very dependent on situation and it is very dependent on property. But it is one of those things where it's like, hey, we have these extra tools in our toolbox. I've mainly seen it used with construction properties because at the beginning of the construction, they're making their deposits. Mm -hmm. um, but at the completion of the construction, now the house is valued at more than what they've originally put into it and what they were originally appraised at. So we can use that new appraised value as the basis for the lending and we'll use the equity in so that since, property. Okay, so is it strictly new construction that you can use that with? Because that makes sense to me that you'd be equity positive at the end yeah. of the build term. Yeah, well, it's not just new constructions, but that's the main place I've seen it and those are the examples I've shown. But I have heard of this same lender doing it with just properties that are equity positive. If they bought a house that's under market value and they have 20% equity, this is an option. Now, it's not an uh, a lender. It is more towards the private side, so you do have a higher interest payment. Right. But that being said, you have zero down payment. So what are we talking about? Like private private lending rates. What are we at now? Like seven to to nine percent or seven to twelve. Seven to twelve yeah, percent. And then usually there's a, a fee too, like a one percent. One percent lender fee is the average. You can see up to two or three percent. Right. Well, actually, I've seen some with five, but that's more of a rarity. Mm -hmm. And that's usually when you're dealing with 5%, those are a lot smaller loans, and which is why those are higher lender fee. Now, here's a question, because I know like you're pretty big into investing and things like Absolutely. that. So have you ever considered kind of getting involved in, in that side of things as like funding private mortgages? Or, or you know how they have like collections of people who yep. kind of start a fund yep. to, to do that? Like. Um, you ever thought of that? It's definitely in my wheelhouse, and I actually have looked into it a few times. Uh, you need a decent amount of capital to be able to do it. What's the buy? Like a hundred grand minimum, or more? A hundred grand to five hundred, depending okay. on who you go with. But these are private lending companies that I'm talking. What I'm talking about is private lending companies. They're already established. They already have like fifty million dollars that they're working with. Mm. You contribute your funds and then you just start getting checks in the mail if they were told. Just like a prorated amount based on what you've put in. Yeah, exactly. So the one that I was talking to did it about ten percent. Wow. Ten percent of you. Yeah, that's really good investing wise. Pretty great return for something that's you know, safe. Absolutely. Very safe, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's I mean I uh I took I took my mortgage uh, agency courses just to have some good you know foundational knowledge so I could better serve my clients. So this was something that kind of interested me because I'm kind of an investor nut too. So yeah, when I read about it a little bit, I was just, just curious because you know in all practical senses, you, you now you know you know the inside track of it. Oh yeah. So I just read it in textbooks. <laughs> curious about. Yeah personal reasons it's it's a little bit different but we can definitely do it and those good returns on that side of it right but like as we always say the higher interest rate or the higher gains the more of a risk so it is relatively free of risk but there is risk right huh. so very cool yeah something you might want to look at in the future yeah so what's uh what's business going to look like for you in into this next quarter then like Obviously, with the rate increases, like the real estate market's still pretty hot. Uh, like, what, what's what's it gonna look like? From my perspective, I think we're gonna see rates increase, which means I think we're gonna see less refinances within the next few months. And uh, I don't know how fast interest rates are going to go up, but I feel like as soon as we get closer to that one percent, we're gonna see less people selling their houses. And so it might even put more pressure on the market. I'm excited because you know what? I, I, like I just this is from the real estate side of things, and I've only been doing this for like three years. Yeah. And so for for one, I moved to Port Stanley, which is you know great little community, but I don't have roots here, so I, I didn't have uh, like they call it your your um, you know your your sphere yeah. of influence, the people the people that you know and the, and the people that you have connections with, and and these are your people who will probably you know do business with you. Well. Yeah. Nobody, <laughs> you know, up until recently, like my brother was like somebody who would have been in my sphere that I did a buy and sale for. But yeah. but prior to that, like any client that I had was basically from a point of, you know, yeah. this is the starting point. Like this is, you know, earning each person, which yeah. which is great. And now I'm getting busier in hell and I can start seeing referral business and everything like that. Oh, absolutely. But, but even in the beginning, 
I used to think to myself, I would look at some of the, the, the things that people were doing and the professionals in the business, and I thought, well, I can do that better. Yeah. I can do this better. I can do that better. And I feel like just because the seller's market has been just so hot, it's an almost like it almost camouflages those little, you know, those things, right? So yeah. so there's there's people who can can get by on their laurels, you know, and and me just being who I am and the fact that I'm a goer yeah. and a producer and I'm I'm somebody who's always thinking and trying to, you know, Absolutely. improve and, and just stay on that track. I think it's really going to open the door up for my business when the market does swing. Yes. Like I'm excited for it because I feel like I bring value. So yeah. so I feel like I'm going to do people a great service mm -hmm. and and they're going to recognize that and then, you know, if there's if there's people who just kind of got by on a hot seller's yeah. market, I feel like, you know, there's there's a time when recipe cards in the mail aren't going to matter to people. They're just going to oh, want to make good dollars and cents. Yeah. Absolutely. Like we're going to see well, I think you're absolutely right. You do the best for your clients. You always get them top dollar. I think when the market does change and people are like, oh, well, there's less supply, I think you'll be doing fantastic throughout that because you're willing to go out there and get the best for your clients. Mm -hmm. I'm actually, so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, just coming in, I'm, I'm thinking about getting my, uh, my broker's license, which is just kind of like the next educational, you yeah. know, endeavor. Yeah. And... You know, will will I go onto my own, or will I, you know, take a franchise of, of Royal Page, which you know I've done done great with Royal Page, and, yep, and I like absolutely. their their training, and their I've had great mentors, and, and you know, just excellent excellent support with Royal Page. Yeah. So I, I love that part of it. The same time, I'm ambitious, and I'm like, oh, you know, so so there's the future that's that's yeah. very exciting. Um, and I don't know which way it's going to go yet, but uh, I do have this this building here, and I got the storefront, and I'm thinking, well, what can I do, you yeah. know, and, and what should I do? Because I do have a very visible property, commercial property here, Absolutely. and I'm thinking, well, it might be a, it might be a cool thing to do. Yeah, but you could be uh, you could maybe come in and be my in house guy. <laughs> I would definitely consider it. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, yeah, I definitely consider it, and I think those great opportunities here in Port Stanley. Mm -hmm. Well, this this community, and I don't know if you saw it on Facebook or not, but uh, so the old like fishing building on the other side of the harbor there. So you've got all that, you know, the, the, where yeah. it's all built up with all. So there's the wharf, and then there's like the the uh, the, the, the inn, and yeah. you know, and and across the road there's that like it's like a long and just follows the sidewalk down there. It's like this old kind of like fishing yeah. building or whatever. So they're actually going to be. Uh, Domus Construction has, has got some sort of deal worked out where they're going to do construction and build like a um, like Port Stanley brewery, microbrewery okay. kind of thing with like, it looks like, you know, basically dockside bar access and probably some cool food and yeah. like, this is going to be oh, off the charts. Yeah, that's going to be fantastic. We got that artisan mar market. Um going into the old fire hall, which is amazing. Okay. Yeah. So so there's some things happening in the downtown. And then of course, you know, tons of residential development going on down here. Oh yes. Absolutely. So the business is, you know, you've got this this great stable, you know, four season population base that's gonna keep the businesses going. I think the yeah. economy down here, you know, which traditionally has been very tourist economy tourist driven yeah you know the businesses are going to be able to flourish in the winter and i think it's going to be an exciting transition kind of time for port. oh absolutely well you see more and more people moving to port stanley like my mother actually just bought a house in port stanley where why didn't she use me <laughs> uh, it was a private <laughs> sale it was a private sale oh i didn't even God. know about it till it was done oh, there wasn't even a real estate agent involved oh it better not have been <laughs> yeah, there wasn't there wasn't i promise there wasn't but yeah she just bought a I can't think of the address, but I know it's up the hill from where you are. Where, like on uh, like Harrison or like by Harrison the water tower? Is it a newer one or an older? It's a newer one. Oh yeah, so she's probably in like one of those like Compass Trail or something. Or maybe, yeah. I mean Beamish, some somewhere there. There's there's yeah. yeah there, I mean there's a lot of like. I, I, she hasn't moved in yet, so I don't know the address. <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, but that being said, she bought it off the market, and uh, I think she did really well for herself. Huh? Given the price she bought it at, but the other person wasn't working with a real estate agent, so I don't know if they knew what the top dollar would be. You know, that's the that is the actual tricky thing. 
Yeah. Sometimes, you know, real estate agents don't know what the top dollar will be. Like it's yeah. a, it's a crap shoot. Um, mm-hmm. I just sold, um, to a, a friend of mine, you know, high school friend, um, in her dream neighborhood in London, like old North, you yeah. know, Ryerson public school, she's a prof at UWO. So I just sold her, you know, this beautifully renovated, it's not a huge house, but you know, two bedroom, it's, it's completely finished. Everything, it, this, yeah. this place is nice. So I just sold this place to her and, uh, you know, I'm pulling market data and market data and then I'm always forecasting cause I'm like, I want to, I want to win. I want to win yeah. and, and I want to win for my client. Right. Absolutely. And, uh, so anyway, she went through the, she went through the property with me and then she yeah. went back through it, um, at an open house with her boyfriend. Yeah. He loved it too. And they're talking to the real estate agent and she goes, now, mind you, a lot of times when, when an agent, you know, is working an open house for for somebody else maybe they're new maybe they're not you know very seasoned or maybe they're not busy maybe they're not really producing that much and they just kind of want some lead generation so they'll give up their saturday sunday afternoon start running an open house okay that being said my client comes in there with her boyfriend and they're talking to the agent hosting yeah and she goes you know i bet this place goes for over six hundred thousand. okay so sarah tells me that and i go well, I think it just might because, you know, what the average the average price of a semi detached is is like what like six eighty six ninety. I'm I'm pretty sure, you know, that this yeah. this beautiful detached home in a, in a stellar neighborhood is going to go for way way yeah. more. So there ended up being like eighteen bids, and we ended up winning. So so thank goodness. Yeah. Um. But she got this like message in the morning hey just so you know the house sold for this much and she goes yeah i bought it you (laughs) know i'm not surprised and and you know it's kind of one of those things like you gotta do your homework oh absolutely absolutely you have to do your homework and you need to be able to project that confidently with your client and And you're always nervous because you know man a lot of times the leg data is useless like unless you can have some sort of you know formula or strategy to kind of get past the leg data that we get at the end of the month, yeah. you're not selling anything because yeah. the, the growth that we had is just unprecedented. So oh, agents who can adjust and who are not dynamic, one, you're not servicing yourself because you're not going to get paid. Two, you're not servicing your client because you're wasting their time and they're never going to get a house. Yeah. So you got to give them the best advice you can. Oh, and absolutely. if you can't, you better find a formula that's going to work. Absolutely. Or you won't have you won't have a client base. Yep, one hundred percent. Well, like mortgage agents, like we have it a lot easier in that way. But we have it where or client, well, not clients. I apologize. Lenders are constantly changing their rules on what they accept, or they're changing their products. So my dynamics is more like, oh, well, this lender couldn't offer a HELOC. Well, now they can offer a HELOC. Oh, this lender used to use this product. Now they're using these standards, so I can't offer this product anymore. But mine is always available at the edge of a phone. So I just call them up and I'm like, hey, can we do this? They'll tell me yes or no. Well, yours is more you have to play a guessing game. Yeah. <laughs> and you hate you hate being an expert and saying, well, it's kind of a crapshoot. Yeah. Like, you better yeah. have a, a yeah. way of determining. We'll see how it goes. The worst is like, you know, um, I think there's almost more pressure when you're representing a buyer because, you know, their their expectation is is something, you know, very difficult to achieve which is they want to buy that house oh absolutely and when there's 18 other people with their hand in the pot it makes it very tough to get that one for them yeah whereas if you're representing the the the, you know if you're the listing agent representing a seller well really it's these buyers job the buyer's agent's job to know the market and bring market value so as long as you market the property effectively let everybody know what's going on with it. Show it yeah. in the best way you possibly can. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the, re- the re- we're relying on them to, to know what, what the hell they're buying. Oh, absolutely. Do your homework. Make sure you bid right yeah. and, and get the price because, you know, sellers do have an expectation too now. Oh, absolutely. And we'll see. Well, one thing I'm seeing a lot of, especially among my friends, is they'll see in the price of houses and they'll be like, well, that house is worth this much. I should have bought this house for this much. It should have went for this much. And it's always like lower. And that's advice that they're getting from their parents. Well, their parents haven't bought in real estate in the past 20 years. They're saying, well, this house should go for that much. Well, they don't mm-hmm. know the market nowadays. So those these guesses are usually wildly off and completely undervalued. We had an interesting one where, uh, so 
client of mine, they got their place up for sale and a real estate agent, another real estate agent he plays hockey with wants to buy it. And I've got, the, yeah. I, I've got the listing going on, right? So I'm going to let him in and, and, and just to just tour him around. Yeah. He can get himself in the house, but I just want to kind of show him what I see for, for the property, right? Just yeah. to show him my vision and, and what I see. Yeah. So I meet him there, this and that. And, and you know, this guy has access. He knows what they paid for it. He knows like he he know he knows everything, right? Yeah. So he he did say, you know, I'll buy it for and it was just like marginally more <laughs> yeah. than what than what they paid for it. And then they're just like, No, like yeah. that's not what we're doing, man. Yeah. And so, you know, I was with the guy and I said, Well, if you don't like the price on this one, then you know, check out this one. It's the exact same size, it's in the same neighborhood, it's in, you know, basically down down the line, it just yeah. checks out completely comparable property. Ended up selling for, you know, yeah. basically almost four hundred thousand more than he wanted to pay for for this house. And this guy's yeah. a real estate agent, so it's just like, you know, you hope, yeah. you know, is he is is he is he that out of touch, or or is it just like he just loves a deal? Maybe it's both. I, I'm no, not really sure. Both. Yeah, maybe he was lowballing you. Who knows? But a lot of like clients who own in the real estate business, they're having to deal with an adjustment of like four hundred thousand isn't the house it used to be. I was going to ask you, how are they appraising? Like, do you guys, are you guys still ordering appraisals? Uh, and and how how often is a house not appraised? Well, what happens is uh, there's an, most lenders have an automatic appraisal system. And that's based off of recent market value. Right. Which so is usually determined House Sigma. Like, well, not House Sigma, but like they have more advanced ones. But still, it's usually legs behind by a few months. So when it... When someone buys a house, we send it to the lender. The lender runs an appraisal on that property. If it does not appraise at the automatic appraisal value, then they're having to go get an actual appraisal. So it all depends on how well they did in buying it. Right. Do you want to hear something interesting that came Always. up? It came up in our sales meeting this week. Yeah. We were talking about how Sigma. Yeah. Right. I didn't know this, but how Sigma is actually a real estate brokerage as well as as oh, as, that. as that app. Right. Yeah. So they use their algorithm based on neighborhood data to, to price a home and estimate high, low, yeah. median, projected sales prices and, and, and things of that nature, right? And I'm thinking to myself, and I'm just sitting here listening in, in, as my broker of records telling me about this, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, we're Royal LePage, which we're a giant in yeah. the Canadian real estate market and, and often quoted by the media, you know, Phil yeah. Soper, CEO, He's often quoted as the authority on what's going on in the housing market. And and I'm thinking to myself, well, okay, how old is our website? You know, yeah. I know it's functional and people use it. And, and a lot of times, like I'm talking about, you know, how I was talking about resting on your laurels yeah. before. I'm, I'm thinking about that again because I'm thinking, okay, Royal LePage is comfortable knowing that our website is the second high, highest trafficked real estate website other than realtor.ca. Yeah. But then I'm thinking to myself, how many people are downloading and using as a tool when they're shopping for a house, House Sigma? Yeah. And why aren't we developing this kind of app, which I later found out we are, but it needs to come fast because yeah. every day that goes by and people talk about this kind of stuff, it's driving traffic to this other brokerage, which oh, virtually was unknown months ago. Yeah. Now it's on everybody's tip of their tongue. Everybody's talking about House Sigma and everybody's checking these, you know, and, and, it, and you know what? The projected or forecasted um, sold values don't even have to be accurate. All yeah. I got to do is is give them and people just want to know. People just love numbers. Yeah. They just want to know, hey, where, where, ballpark oh, me, ballpark me. Absolutely. Well, so many people that I know, they just want to know what's sold around their neighborhood. They want to know what their neighbors sold their sure. house for. They want to know what the people across the world sold their house for. So these apps, they give people the access, and then it gets them in the thought process, maybe I could sell my house for that much. If Roy LePage has seen this podcast or listening to this podcast, <laughs> we need that app. We need it in development. If it isn't already, yesterday, we need it, we need it going. Because yeah. if, if we're getting all this traffic driven to another brokerage that was virtually an unknown, we are losing people <laughs> quickly. So... You know what? Give our people, which, you know, we have the most well-educated consumers on the planet. Yeah. Give them the tools to, to feel no, confident absolutely. and also trust in their realtor, too. Yeah. Because the algorithm isn't perfect. It's still just a program. It's oh, yeah. still just a machine. You still yeah. need a professional to actually, you know, make sure that you're getting things done and protecting you. 100%.
But you know what? If people want to know, let them know. Knowledge is power. Why, why, oh, wouldn't, exactly. why shouldn't they know? Exactly. Because the more your clients know, the better the informed they are, which means you have a foundation to help them follow their knowledge. And it deepens their trust with, with your professional opinion. Absolutely. Because now you're talking about the same thing. Yeah. 100%. So, but anyways, Nathaniel, I uh, I think we pretty much, unless there's another topic that, no, that I'm, you've got. I'm good. Yeah, I think we, we've, we've got a pretty good little wrap here, and, and it's been great, as always, talking oh, to you. And it's great having the viewers uh, here, and I hope you learned something. And if you're in the market, you're buying, selling, or investing, make sure you give me a call. Um, it's Ryan Featherstone Servicing, London, St. Thomas, and the Port Stanley Real Estate Markets. And... And if you're looking for a mortgage in anywhere in Ontario, please give me a call. I'm Nathaniel Freeman. I'm a mortgage agent with Real Approved Mortgages. And um, I look forward to hearing from you all. Okay. Everyone have a great day. See ya.